So I say this all the time here on the channel, and it's something I really believe. There really never has been a better time to be a guitar player. We've got more access to better gear of different types in different price brackets and levels for different uses and applications. I mean, literally, there is a guitar and rig out there for everybody. But one of the downsides to that is things can get a little bit overwhelming and confusing at times. And one of the things I want to do on this YouTube channel is kind of help clear the air, so to speak, and educate and inform and learn about all of this gear that we have access to as guitar players. What do you need? What don't you need? What's worth checking out and what's not? So with that in mind, I'm bringing back, resurrecting an old series that I used to have here on the channel more consistently. We're bringing it back. This is a new episode of... Now, the Universal Audio Aux Box is nothing new. It's been on the market for a few years now, and it's something that I've had my eye on for a while. I haven't bought one because, quite frankly, they're pretty expensive, and I didn't know if I needed one. Now, over the past four or five weeks or so, I've been using the Aux exclusively. I've not pulled out any microphones and mic'd up any cabs. I've used it on gigs, and I've used it on just about every video I've done on the channel since I've had this in my possession. Now, I'll have those videos linked down below if you wanna check them out, but today we're gonna to take an in-depth look at the Universal Audio Aux Box and try and decide should you buy one? Now, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name's Rhett Scholl. I post new videos every week. Be sure to subscribe down below and click that bell icon to be notified when I'm posting new videos and going live here on the channel every single Sunday night. If you want more information on the gear I'm using in today's video, they'll be linked in the description box down below. Those are affiliate links, which means if you buy something, I get a small commission, which is a great way to support the channel. Or you can buy a t-shirt, coffee mug, Kemper Profile, Helix Preset, all that stuff is linked down below. So without further ado, let's move in and take a closer look at the Aux. They didn't provide this unit to me to review, and uh, they actually don't even know I'm making this video. But with that said, the Aux is a well-made piece of gear, and that's pretty much what I would expect from UA. Now, if you're new to the recording and production game and you're not familiar with Universal Audio, they've been building high-end interfaces, recording gear, and really nice, well-made plugins, software plugins for years. And so the build quality is pretty much what I would expect from a UA product. It's well-made, the materials are nice, the knobs and switches feel good. It's a nice piece of gear. Now, there are plenty of in-depth videos on this unit that really go into all the technical ins and outs of what it does. And I'm gonna link one below that Pete Thorne made a few years ago when this came out because quite frankly, I'm a big fan of Pete Thorne and I think the video he made on this thing was really well done. So Pete's video will be linked down below. You should check it out after viewing this video. Now the front panel controls are pretty simple. You have a rig selector switch here, which allows you to save up to six different presets. You have a room control here, which allows you to dial in a certain amount of room ambience into your cabinet simulation. Your speaker volume controls the built-in attenuator, and then your line out and headphone controls the output of the unit through the main line outputs in the back and the headphone out here on the front. First gripe though with this unit is there's only quarter inch out on the back and no XLR, which quite frankly, I don't understand why UA decided to only put quarter inch out on the back. It's not a huge deal, but when I've used it live, I ended up having to use quarter inch to XLR adapters, which is just one more thing you have to bring with you, but we'll get more into the live thing in just a minute. The real control over the aux comes from the app. That means you have to have a tablet with the app installed to really utilize this thing. Now I have to say, I really like the app. It's well-made, it's well-designed, it's been really stable 
on my iPad and with this particular aux. And it's easy to understand for someone who's new to recording and maybe doesn't understand all the ins and outs of signal flow and mic choice and mic placement. You also have a cool master bus section that has an EQ, an 1176 compressor, a delay and a plate reverb. So you can also use this pretty much as an effects unit if you wanted to, to get some nice reverb and delay effects post amp and cabinet, which is really cool. And it comes included with pretty much every single type of microphone you would wanna to use to record guitars. And the reality is, as a recording tool, this thing is incredible. gotten some of the best sounding guitar tones I've ever gotten here in this home studio. Also being able to blend in the room mics, either a mono or a stereo pair is a great feature because most of us don't have really good spaces to record guitar. And a key part of recording great guitar sounds is the space that the cabinet is in. You want the cabinet to be in a really nice room space, unless you're going for a super dry sound, which is common. But most of us don't have great studios with high ceilings and wood floors that are perfectly treated and dialed in to prevent flutter echo and standing waves. So having the room mic control built into the app and the unit itself is incredibly useful. So if I bought an aux to use at home, it'd have to be a really special reason to actually pull out microphones and mic up a cab because I think the sounds that you can get out of this unit are as good as anything I would be able to get here in my home studio. So as you can probably tell, I really like the aux for home recording. I think if you're a player that's looking for an all-in-one solution to make recording great guitar sounds at home, this should be something to consider. But what about for live use? When I first borrowed this from Rick, that was what I was most excited about. I use in-ears a lot, and a lot of the amps that I use live don't have master volumes, and I have to be really conscious of stage volume. So an attenuator is something I've started traveling with in the past year or so. So I was really excited to try the aux out and see if it's something that I could make work in my rig. And the answer is probably not. My first issue is with the attenuator. No matter how high you have it set, the aux is always attenuating your signal a little bit. And aside from that, the attenuator in the aux really doesn't sound all that great. About a year ago, I bought one of these. This is the Iron Man 2 Mini from Tone King, and this is the best sounding attenuator I've ever used. It's a reactive load attenuator, and it does an incredible job of just turning your amp's volume down without changing the tone. The Aux's attenuator, in my experience, on the gig really didn't do that. Now, I will say on the gigs that I used the Aux on, we were running in-ears. So I ran the stereo output into our in-ear monitor rig, and the guitar sounded incredible. It sounded like I was mic'd up in a studio.
was also really nervous to travel with this thing. Part of that is because it wasn't mine, I'm borrowing it from a friend, but also it's kind of big, it's kind of heavy, it's pretty expensive. In fact, depending on what type of amp you're running, the thing sitting on top of your amp might cost as much or more as the amp itself, as is the case right here. The Aux also takes its own proprietary power supply. Proprietary power supply, that's pretty tough to say. It takes its own unique power supply, which in a gigging situation is kind of a pain in the ass because it's one more thing that you have to bring. It's one more thing you have to keep track of. And if you're playing in a bar or a club, it's one more thing that can get beer spilled on it or stepped on or broken. I think this would be much better for live use if it had a built-in power supply that you just plug an IEC cable into like an amp. So I think when you factor in the size, the cost, and the extra stuff that you have to bring with it, the aux isn't a great solution for most live players out there. It sounds great and it does everything that it would do in your home studio for your live rig, but the reality is most people don't need that. Especially if you're playing in a club or honky tonk, a lot of those subtleties are gonna be lost by the time your guitar signal gets to front of house. So the aux, in my opinion, is pretty much overkill for live use. It's one of my favorite things about this amp, the light up logo. So one other thing that I've seen people complain about the aux that I actually don't think is a bad thing is the fact that this isn't an impulse response loader, an IR loader. Now, if you're not familiar with what IRs are, I've got a video on that in the works, and if you're watching this sometime in the future, it'll be available here. But basically, this works completely differently than something like the Sur Reactive Load IR. It can seem limiting to only have access to the cabinets and mic models that Universal Audio has given you, but Universal Audio is one of the best plug-in makers in the game. The software emulations of preamps and compressors and EQs and even guitar amps that they make are incredibly well done. Now, it's not just them. The company SoftTube has a lot to do with that as well. I'm not sure how much involvement they had in the aux, but the bottom line is the software emulations, the models of the microphones and cabinets in the aux sound really, really, really good. And to me, one thing that I typically don't like about impulse response loaders is the way you audition them. Oftentimes it's sitting on your computer with a mouse clicking through and playing, clicking through and playing until you find an IR or a series of IR files that you like to then load onto your IR loader. If you have any experience recording in a studio environment, using the aux will feel right at home to you. You have control over the distance the mic is away from the cabinet, whether the mic is on or off axis, and you can use things like EQs and compression to really tailor the sound to your guitar and amp that you're playing at the time. So while some people see that as a downside, I actually think the fact that this is not an IR loader is pretty cool. So all in all, should you buy an aux? Well, I think there's two different players out there that would be looking at something like this. The home studio recording guy or session guy or professional that wants to be able to record really great sounding guitars at home remotely to send off to sessions that they might be working on. If that's you, I think you should seriously consider it. It's expensive at $1,300 US at the time of making this video. It's definitely not cheap. And there are other options out there that are worth considering from companies like Two Notes, the Sur Reactive Load IR. This is becoming a really crowded marketplace for stuff like the Aux. But in my experience of using it over the past few weeks for recording and making these videos, I've really enjoyed the results I've gotten from the Aux. The other player is someone that might be looking to use it as a solution for their live rig to be able to go DI with any of their amps. And for you, I would tell you to look elsewhere. I would buy it for the home studio and leave it there. So what do you think about the aux? Do you own one? Are you thinking about buying one? Let me know in the comments section down below. And also let me know what you wanna see next here on the Gear Talk video series. I'm really interested to know what you guys are curious about. 
All the links are in the description. If you want to support the channel, you can check that out down there. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram at Rhett Scholl to keep up with what's going on in my musical world each week. And check out the Backstage Journal podcast. We're right in the middle of season two. We've had a bunch of really cool guests on so far. That's linked down below as well. Anyways, I'm Rhett Scholl. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you on the next video. And remember, there is no plan B.